Welcome back. This is episode number nine. If you notice, there was a short pause between episodes there. Apologize about that. I had to go handle some real life stuff. Now we're back. Changed our title to A Bit of Hacker. And we're checking the town project board, which is a good habit to get into anytime that you're in town. And you haven't checked it recently. Go ahead, give it a check. It refreshes itself every couple hours. Now, we've been having a problem with being overburdened, so we're now putting as much as we can in the storage shed. You're going to want to keep your quest items on you. They don't weigh much. I guess I'm equipped to get everything. And uh, we become overburdened, but I want to see what kind of crafting quests I can complete. At the time, I didn't uh, realize there was a more efficient way to do it, which is just look for the yellow squares or diamonds on the items. So now that we're encumbered, we're going to go ahead and see what kind of stuff we can craft. See if we can get any new items. Let's check the stone crafting. Nothing there. Okay, we can make a lot of linen and leather things. Let's use some fish guts. We've got plenty of those. So we made a coarse leather hat with plus four dexterity, plus two intelligence. And that's because I hate that hat. That's super weird. And I'm gonna go ahead and salvage it because it creeps me out. So going back over here, there's not really anything else I wanna make right now. I've got kind of the whole set that I can make at the moment. The crafting table is interesting. There's a lot of secondary and additional items for crafting that you wouldn't normally think would go with that. And it's very specific, uh, but it's also realistic. So, man flint axe, weak proficiency booster increases the amount of resources gathered with your tool by 5% for 10 minutes. So it's a nice little like micro buff. I don't really use I don't really use anything but health potions. I don't use the mana potions. So that's a good secondary. Standard repair kit can repair any of your armor, but because we're a lower level right now, we get armor so consistently that we don't really need to repair it unless it's broken and we need it right now because we get stuff that replaces it pretty often. Nothing here to tan. I'll come back and talk to the syndicate. Nothing for alchemy. So we've got the same quest we've had picked up before. And that's pretty much all we can make. There's a storage shed there, but I wanted to go check, see what we can cook and what we can smith. So here's the kitchen. We've already reached tier four at this point. I'm just gonna start cooking everything that I can that's a quest item. Energizing light ration. Got four of them there. And so that's it for quest items. You can switch your secondaries. Honey's free, so I'm switching to honey. Plus honey tastes good. I'm smoking some barbecue ribs right now. Of course honey's in the barbecue sauce. You gotta add it. It's just part of barbecue. So, if you don't do that, you're not doing it right. Cooking level 40. Spice metal pie, cayenne dye, some other stuff that probably rhymes. Typically, you can't really make that stuff 
until like you're around level 40, which makes sense. And because my combat level is 18, I don't have any of the stuff I need to cook those recipes. So I'm really like kind of far ahead of where I'm supposed to be. And I could probably kind of cool down or back off on harvesting things for a while and just focus on getting my combat level up. But I like the um, crafting aspect. So we had nothing to do with woodworking. You go over here and check out the smithy. No. Technically, you have to smelt your bars first. So here we are. At the smelter. Got nothing to smelt. So, last thing I like to check is this smithy here. But I already know that I don't have the ingot bars and the leather and basically anything else for it. But we have finished something for the town project board cooks needed and I think that was for rations so we go back over here to the town project board and turn that in and then another one that pops up is tanners needed 90 coarse leather so you're gonna have to do a lot of skinning for this quest now it was still fun to do this grind um, I like when a game gives you a purpose to do stuff. I don't like just going out and like killing animals. I like to actually, you know, it has to have like objective, like the town needs turkeys, so we're gonna go kill turkeys, you know. At least people are gonna eat it, it's gonna help us out. So it has like a good use. So what we're doing now is we're unloading our inventory. We've crafted everything that we needed to. We're just going to hold on to mostly quest items, some fishing gear, some basic food, and some utilities like our potions. That really brings our weight down a lot. Now we're running nice and fast again. So we've got some quests. You can see one out there in Elder Gate. So we're going to head towards that. That's number one on the map and also on our compass up there at the top of the screen. Once again, this is Windsward Village. We're going to do a lot of traveling soon. Discovering other cities. Probably the next episode, I believe. Get some mining done. Remember the bigger the rock or the bigger the tree or whatever, the bigger the payoff. So we got 18 stone off of that one. Achievement unlocked. So many to pick. I'm not sure what that's for. Probably has to do with picking a certain amount of stones. So you're gonna to wanna to upgrade all your harvesting tools as soon as possible as we've gone over before. And that's gonna help you not only harvest more, but faster. Some of the harvesting gear, as you get better crafting, can possibly have bonuses to them, I believe. When I see a double earth spine like that, it's too tempting not to take it, so... This is my playstyle. Uh, you don't have to play like this once it launches, but I believe this helps you not have to come uh, what I call back play. Kind of like backpedaling on a bicycle. Uh, You've got to back play. You've got to go back to where you already were and replay content, but now you're not going to get any XP for it. So you basically got to do stuff twice, and that's why I call it back play. So I like to you know, pretty much collect everything that I need on the way going somewhere. Sometimes I don't even make it to where I'm going. I'll pull up too much weight but like every once in a while there's a quest for example to get 90 coarse leather and so I'm skinning all these to get as much rawhide as I can now I've got 26 each uh, one has given us around 10 um, the bow is not as fast as the gun and so for me personally I'm not as used to it and end up switching back to a musket but I just wanted to use the arrows that I've accumulated from previous loot and chests and quests and things like that. So 42 
rawhide, as you can see, you can collect it pretty fast. Using the rapier here. And there's another guy, two guys playing over here. And this is when I discover that the bear is in here. And I remember watching Asmon Gold play it because he got that special data or whatever. And we come back to this place and have absolutely no problem killing this giant bear. I didn't even use a potion or anything. And, uh, oh, this one's got the tank for it. Where is the bear? Here's a silver vein. Always good to collect it. That guy's taking my uh, hide, but that's fine because I got the silver and there's plenty of wolf to get more. There we go. My bad about the bear. I got excited. Not a spoiler, but you saw the thumbnail. Scratchy is in this episode and he's in this area of the map. I believe he's higher up the mountain. So we're going to keep heading that way. Up the mountain we go. It's really great how steep your character can run. And I like how you can scale all of the rocks in the game too. That's really neat. I like that. Um, I used to get stuck on these like endless journeys in the water of like World of Warcraft to try to like get back. So you can see he's got a yellow dot over him, this elk. Um, I'm gonna try and get him. I only have two arrows. Got one headshot, nice. And I missed the second shot, so now it's just rapier time. Got outsmarted. Cut him off somehow. And this is why it's so useful to have experience with range and backup weapons. There we go. So we got one. It's a doe. If you couldn't tell, it didn't have antlers. But I think it still counted. So we got some rawhide and some venison. Here's a puma. Go ahead and skin that. Don't want to let it go to waste. Obviously someone else is here. There he is. He's cutting out trees. So the mission over here is to hunt and clean the elks. Here we've got some life bloom. It's always a good pickup. You can make some good potions out of this. And here's the den with the scratchy the bear. There he is. So I'm like, oh man. 16. This guy shows up and he kind of bolsters my confidence. Like, hey man, do it. You can do it. I'll back you up. And I was like, uh, I'm going to try and get in here real quick. So we picked up the supply crate. Get a quest item, sealed document. Yeah, pick up a collectible. He kind of follows you as you run around his cave. And another guy shows up. So there's two of us and I'm like, we're going in. Now when Asmon did this, there was like 40 guys and they were all riding like a bunch of girls and we just killed this guy in like 30 seconds. And of course, I skinned it first because I got the insight to do that immediately. I mean, I want to see what he's got. So we got red meat, 26 rawhide, not bad. Here's some saltpeter, that guy got the silver ore and there's another supply crate. Another sealed document, so that's good. The rapier is fun to use. I do like feeling like a three musketeer. Um, kind of like Spanish pirate kind of guy. Kind of fits what's going on. Either that or like a pilgrim. Out here exploring the world. So we're at the top of the mountain. Gonna get my health back up. 
It's always good to check your health. It's easy to forget. And um, you play enough games, you fall off a cliff like this, low health, you die. It's a real pain in the butt. Got some more Pumas here. Get some more Rawhide, and you can see in the distance behind me there's some ore. But I want to collect these Rawhides so that I can complete that town board project. And we've still got a good amount of weight that we can carry. So I've already got two sealed documents. And I'm not really understanding why, because it's not like I can do anything with the sealed document. It's not like I can open it or interact with it. Just like to chat, weighs nothing. So, well, you see the ore over here, and there's some here. Iron's great. Definitely want to stop and get iron every time you can. It's valuable. If you don't want it, you can sell it. Trade it for something else. So at level 25, and I've unlocked tracking iron. So now on my map, you can see the little iron balls. They look like little brown rocks. The gold vein's too high for me at the moment. So there's more iron using my tracking system. iron. Ooh, double. And this really speeds up the process because when you unlock the ability to track the nodes that you need to level up, it makes it a lot faster. You don't like go past them anymore. You're always like see them on the compass and you're like, ooh, there's one up here. I'm gonna go collect that. This is a good area for nodes. These trees are cool. Wormwood trees. There's three of them here, I believe. A lot of people are setting up camp here um, because they want to come back and cut down this tree and then they want to fill up on this stuff and then teleport to town and craft stuff or sell the materials, come back. You can make a lot of money that way. It's a big iron vein. So I know that picking up iron is not my quest, but iron nodes are not super easy to find, and this is a really rich area with a lot of them. And I just got that tracking, so I've been picking up a lot of those, and we haven't even hit level 26 yet, but we're going to be able to get a lot of iron ingot off this stuff here. Look, Scratchy's respawned, so I'm going to go jump in on this. There we go. Oh yeah. Got him up. Red meat and rawhide. Three and thirty-two. Cool. So we've already got this stuff and it's uh I'm not sure why I'm not getting quest update. And this is part of the reason why we run beta. Get up a bush, get down a tree, see if that makes a difference, I don't know. Probably not. It is cool that you can help people that you're not equipped with. I like that about this game. Nice, got a blue animal eye. So, once in a while you'll get a rare crafting item like that, and usually if it's something strange like an animal eye, it's usually for alchemy. So I decide I'm going to climb up to the top of this mountain and see if there's some other part that I'm not getting like the last scroll from, and I see these ruins. So we run over here. There's an elk. It's still got the yellow diamond on it, so we're gonna go ahead and kill this elf. Got him. We're gonna skin him. 
that's basically nature's way of looting. So we got our venison and rawhide. Level 40 tracking is getting to pretty good. And we've unlocked Apprentice Hunter. The boomers like to jump around. Sometimes you'll see like that green bag, and that means that there's an uncommon item or a green item in there. Waterlocked gloves of the priest. Probably not what we want since we're not healers. So I'm gonna go up here and kill these guys. I've got backup in case they're too far. And then of course we've always got potions, but they're pretty simple. So there's our last sealed document. And that is why we were getting the quest update. It wasn't actually because it was bugged. It was because we couldn't find that last sealed document that we needed. And now you can see that it's disappeared. So we can go on back past Scratchy and everybody else. Just focus on finding some elk possibly and working our way back to town. Maybe we'll hit, pick up some iron on the way there. There's an elk. They're quick buggers. Or Puma's always attack you, so... But they're good XP, and Rawhide and Mito is a good reward. Get your leather working and your cooking up. Those are both rewarding. I like leather armor. It's got good bonuses to it for damage. The metal's cool, but what I've noticed so far is that there's not a big advantage. There's some more armor, naturally, but it's not such a big increase that it's like a huge difference. Like in RuneScape, there's like a massive difference between leather and plate. First of all, there's that whole chain mail in between anyways. So down here at the water, which is just a good rule of thumb, naturally, if you're hunting animals, you want to find the water supply because just like animals, people can only live a couple days without water. Same deal goes with animals. If you have no water, you've got no animals, no water, no life. That's why they're looking for water on like Mars and stuff. So water equals elk. And look at all these elk that we found. So that being said, if you're looking for game or hunting, Find the water supply. If you hang out there, you're only gonna have to hang out so long. So we got a fire snail. That's cool. Not really sure what that's used for yet. I always try to pick up all of the collectible tickets and journal entries and things that I see. Articles and books and things. I'm not sure why we're picking them up other than the lore, but I suspect that there's going to be some sort of achievements later on that people are going to backplay to get. And that's going to be one of those things It's like, I have to go through the whole game again because I didn't pick them up when I saw them versus just picking them up when you see them. So, to play the game the way the game's intended to be played, it's a lot more rewarding. It feels less like work. That's just my opinion, though. So we're at the top of a cliff here. There's a life boom in the water there, but we can't collect it. Shock bulb's a good one to collect. Plus it looks cool. Get some good XP off of it. Air moat, shock bulbs. And over here at this pirate ship crash in the waterfall, there's some of these blue stones. Um, star something. Unfortunately, I didn't get that far. So we do have to defeat Keelstrap. He's got to be around here. So Let's see if we can find him. This is like Pirate Town, Buccaneer Falls, and I believe he's on the second story in this building. So we're just gonna run up there and see if we can fight him. Nice. Your supply stockpile. There he is. He's got the yellow above him. He's a heavy hitter. As you can see, I'm already down to half health. But uh, I have to take my potion early in case I fight long enough to get a second one, which is unlikely, but sometimes it happens. So 
we're unloading all of our moves on him, get bleeding, multi attacks. What am I doing? I'm trying to eat some food real quick. Boom. Barely killed him, got 119 health left, but it worked. So, we've got to eat our food and go back in. Supply stock now. Nice. I got a musket and a long sword. Really, that was totally worth that fight. So, the musket is better. And I've got a lot of cartridges, so. Let me go ahead and salvage it. Try to lose the weight. There we go. Oh, and he respawned, but we're gonna split. I don't wanna, like, hog the NPC, uh, the quest tag. Quest NPC. So there's another quest here, and basically I gotta kill all these guys. See the yellow above the kill strap pistol. Um, I gotta kill a bunch of pirates. But that guy's kicking my butt. So I jump. I hit the health potion and I'm out of here. Run across the river. They're still shooting me. And I think, why don't I just shoot them back? But they've got like full health again. They're not moving though, so it's easy to shoot them. There we go, we've got one of them. The boss just got killed by somebody else, which was that second. That turkey's gonna live to see another day. It is on the menu though. Some light grade. Got some iron cartridges. That's good. At least I got some of my ammo back. So we've got 303. The guy's got yellow above him. It's really nice that the questie is like built into the game here. I think that's a huge advantage. That seemed like a good spot to shoot from up here, but it really wasn't. And this is when I start to realize that maybe the rapier is better, but I already have so much invested into cartridges that I'm just going to go ahead and use it see what happens, but I do start to use the rapier more often, because it just, uh, it's just lazier. It doesn't require as much skill and attention, and it's cool. Sometimes you want to take a break or, like, free up your hand and do something else while you're gaming. If you're going to see our master, that would be whatever. Killing all these uh, kill straps, kill straps, whatever they're called. Iron arrow. Not a fan of fighting the ones with the bucklers or the shields, but uh, yeah, that was the last one that I needed, I believe. Light root. Death boat. That's cool. Rough weather. Alchemy crate. That's cool. Air moat and soul moat. It kind of reminds me of runes. Runes game. I 
headshot in the face. Finish them. There we go. Now they're in the graveyard where they belong. In the graveyard. So we're going to go with the recall. You can't be encumbered to recall, which is why I had to drop some stuff there. But we can only carry 0.8 pounds more until we're encumbered, so that's a good deal. And these little icons next to people's names, that's who they're rolling with. That's their squad. So we're going to melt. 33 iron ingot here in the smelter. Make our silver. Because why not? Charcoal. Level 15 smelting. Silver ingot and iron ingot unlocked. Which is weird because I just made those. So here's silver ingot times two. I'm using gold ingot to make silver ingot. I'm not really sure that made sense. Um, so I didn't do it. So I'm like, gold is more valuable than silver. I'm not sure if that's a bug. I'm not really sure what to do with my silver yet, but... Can't really make anything cool. Got a lot of stones to cut. 23. I guess that's not a lot. But it's cool. So what else we got? I think that's pretty much it. We'll check out the um, alchemy and the tanning. Here we go. There's our 91 leather. Cheap and unlocked. Apprentice Tanner. And that's going to get us finished for our town quests. Nothing cool to make. We completed these, so we're going to turn those in. And we get our tokens and our rep, or whatever you want to call it. Check out the crafting. Nothing cool. We've got quest times to cook, but I'm only turning. So, didn't have anything to make there. We're out of what we need. Gonna go turn it at the town board here, town project board. There's a 90, level 19 combat. We also got one for feathers. And we're gonna increase our storage so that our storage isn't full so we don't have to worry about running around with too much stuff. And we're gonna go ahead and take out the stuff that we need, just the quest items. Turn the feathers. Nice. And you will eventually catch up on the town port where there's no more quests to do. And that's okay. Because they do refresh every couple hours. So if that's all you like to do, if you're like totally leveled up and you only like to do the town board quests, well, go take a break, take a nap, go eat something, go do some chores, whatever, get some work done come back and then there's going to be new quests so looking through my journal trying to see what quest it is fishing basics between it and keeps I'm looking for what quest we can turn in here and if there's anything else I think that I can finish off before we really get too far away from the village Got 217 stone blocks, but we need about 300, so I'm gonna go ahead and bank all of this stuff. I don't need any of it right now, and I can always come back and get it. 
What's interesting to note about the storage shed is that each storage shed is unique to each village. You can't put stuff in Windsward's storage shed and expect to pick it up somewhere else. It doesn't work that way. And I think the reasoning for that is because you have different rep with different villages. So you shouldn't be able to have like exalted rep with Windsward and then go to a brand new village across the map that's high level and have all the same benefits in that town because they don't know you. So we used our fast travel stone to get over here to procure and check out what we can do over here for this quest, which is number three. Our quest log and on our mini map. It's always good to have some fresh water. If you don't have a, at least 10 fresh water inventory, you're gonna miss the opportunity to use your alchemy because you're gonna look at it like you don't have materials to make anything. And if you get the water, eventually you'll get the other materials. So I like these things. I like these things to zombies. I got a bow, that's cool. Leveled up our rapier. Do some more defensive damage. Here's a supply stockpile. These are always good for quest items. You can see we got one ornate box, which is what we're here for. And we also got some green boots. Plate boots of the occult. You know, throw those on. So we've got to get more of these ornate boxes. So we got that from a stockpile. I'm going to go ahead and assume that each major building here has its own stockpile. Either inside, outside, upstairs, downstairs, basement, around it, somewhere. And we're probably going to have to pick up each one. That seems to be the format for the questing here. Here we go. There's some journal stuff. We'll go ahead and kill this guy and get that stockpile. But he's like puking all over me. Crazy. Anyways, cool. We got a common health potion. That's a quest item that we need. We got another ornate box. We've got two now. We need seven. At Willett's homestead, which is where we are right now. So, like I said, each building is going to have probably at least one defensive monster to kill, or zombie in this case. And then there's gonna be a box around that. Level six whiskey. We got purchase our upgrade. Powder burn. Adds burning damage. That's a good one, especially to initiate the fight with. Because sometimes you can use it a second time by the time they get to you, depending on how you rotate and how far away you are. Here's another stockpile, but it's got two people defending it, two zombies. So we'll just dispose of them both. It's always good to have health potions because when you get ads like just happened here, you got another poop flinger, pinker guy. You definitely want to have those health potions on you because if we didn't have it, we would have died here. Probably. I don't know. There's a supply crate, we've got a third ornate box. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna go up to the third floor. Here's another one. Leaf Burnt Punisher. And there's another supply crate with another ornate box. So we've got a total of four out of seven right now. This building is done for. We've gotten everything. Now, it's not actually three stories, not to confuse you. The first story is just like brick. This windmill happens to have one, so we can get rid of the Leaf Burnt Punisher. Take the supply crate. We've got a fifth ornate box. Now we're gonna have to start getting creative. We could have skipped one, or it could be in a place that we're not expecting. Or both, because we're missing two. So nothing wrong with getting some extra kills. Here's a supply catch. Here we 
we got number six. We need one more. This thing, no. I believe it's like a barn. That's the burn. See the 35s? That's the burn from the gunshot. Brown rabbit, that's for a quest. Skinned rabbit, see? The brown rabbit will take them. That's for the town. People gotta eat. Here's another rabbit. So, you know, when you find things like this rabbit that you need. Oh, cool. Honey tree. That makes sense. When you find things you need, like the rabbits, best to take them when you're in that spot. Because you won't be able to find them later. Not always. We've got one more to go. We're backtracking. We've already been in here. Can't collect it again. And that's one of the cool mechanisms about New World is that, like, these catches are once and done, and everybody gets them. So, like, nobody's affecting your gameplay by, like, ninja looting you, because the stuff is always there. And I like that. It reminds me more of EverQuest 2. I guess that there was supposed to be another EverQuest that came out, but it just never happened. Once again, Life Bloom's always a good one to just pick up. So I want to go ahead and do that. We need one more. There's a big catch there. But we already got it. It's not shiny. So we've got to get creative here. We're missing one. We've been in that house. We've been in that barn we were just in. We've been in that house. We went in the windmill. Over the shed. We've killed this guy next to the water. There's nothing in this one. But we went in this windmill. We didn't went go in the other windmill. So let's just run around the base of the building here just to show you there really is nothing underneath there. It's really just the foundation. Which would be crazy expensive these days. I ended up running back in here because, you know, XP. But just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I ended up coming to the conclusion that, you know, it's, it's not in any of the buildings that we've already been to. We already know that. But um, I ended up going to the second windmill. And that was the mistake that I made. Is that. That one that you can see right now, we went to, and we got the, the ornate box out of it. It's like puking on me from downstairs. Take that. Anyways, there's two windmills. And I was confusing them, I didn't realize there was two at the time. So, right around the house, like Cilia. I'm looking at it like, man, why am I not getting this quest update? And that's why you watch things like this before the game comes out. Because when, if you didn't get to play, or if you did and you didn't make it this far, or if you played but you played in a different part of the map, you can always come back here and watch like a review like this and learn how to do it before the game is even released. So when the game comes out, you're not running around like I am here going, man, i already been in the windmill. There's two windmills. And there's even a part next to the windmill that's got these big pot belly pigs. And this is when I start to catch on to it. It's got to be something farther away. So there's that pig. I'm like, man, I haven't seen this building. This building's got to have one, right? And it does. There it is. Just gotta kill this uh, sick of here. I got a supply crate. 
ornate box. We got it. Boom, we're done. So, we could possibly fast travel back, but do we want to go to the other quests that are nearby? It's more efficient. Take a look at our quest journal and make sure that we're not missing out on anything important. Probably get some death motes from it. There we go, death moat, one root stems. Get moving through here to the road. It's always good to travel on the road, but it's always good to collect off the road. Up here, I'm just curious about the corrupted monolith here. There's a minor breach, and uh, I'm not a high enough level. They're in their 20s, and I also don't have an Azoth staff. And I don't believe you get that until you do the quest line um, completely. Here's Valley View Mirror Door. That's cool. Get some light bloom. So when you get to like high up on the mountain and like high level areas, you're gonna find that there's a lot more nodes because people can't just like run around and collect them. They gotta like fight mobs. If they're not a high enough level, they just can't do it. So, to get in areas like this, like Turquoise, Prisma Bloom, and all those stuff we're collecting, um, you've got to kill stuff. Valley View Sentinel, level 21. He's got two levels on us, but no problem. And here we go, Supply Stockpile. There's got to be something good. Musket of the Soldier and Weak Solvent. Kill is sensible. And so, in the efficient use of time, I'm actually smoking three racks of ribs right now. Four racks of ribs. Well, three full racks and some tips. Because I don't like to... I'm, I'm smoking them. I got that gravity... Um, Charcoal smoker from, from Mastercraft or whatever. Um, it's awesome. And I'm char grill with smoking some ribs. And I've uh, dry rubbed and marinated them. Got some hot sauce and mustard. And Salt, pepper, some garlic, and uh, some paprika. Put all that on there, smoking it up, checking on it every half hour or so. Um, and I'm hanging out here for like half hour, one hour segment, and then I go and check on the ribs and give them a good mist with the uh, the mist spray that I have. It's just half apple cider with your half water. This is old school southern barbecue style. Good stuff. It helps like break down the meat, make it nice and tender. So here's Blight Root. And uh, we're working our way up here. We got another quest. There's like a green, gassy haze, like a fog, over the uh, graveyard during the day, which is neat. Um, without that, it would probably be just walking right past and not even processing it. It's like the spooky graveyard. So that's cool. I really hope that somebody from Amazon watches these and listens to this part. 
one of my favorite parts about EverQuest 2 and a lot of other games, RuneScape 2, uh, World of Warcraft stuff so doesn't, but I really like this seasonal little, I don't even know what you call them, but like mini quests or mini quest lines. It's like, you know, it's, it's winter and Christmas or holidays around the corner. And it's like, oh, there, there's been penguins discovered and cavern. And you have like a mini quest line for this winter to go do it. And then like, you'll get some sort of cool item that's tradable. It's kind of like a Bitcoin. Like in RuneScape, it was like, you get the Christmas crackers and you pop them. And then you get the party hats and some other stuff. You know, half jugs of wine, discs are returning. You get the pumpkin and the Easter egg. Um, Halloween masks, that was cool. And the Santa hat, of course. And um, in EverQuest, it was really cool because you could get like snowballs and save them for like summer. And you know, sometimes they'd have like a weird bonus if you used them like off season or if you stuff in season. Like uh, you go into this new cavern area and there might be like a little village of like elves or something. They're like selling pumpkin spice lattes or something. Anyways, enough babbling about that. As you get to like mountain areas like this, it's a lot more common to find metal nodes like iron, gold, silver. Okay, this guy's a quest. They do a lot of damage, so be careful. I don't block that often, I think it's lame. But you can see there's a crate there. I kill this guy. I got him bleeding already. This is why it's important also to use the weapon that you want to use when you get to a higher level. If you think you might want this weapon, use that weapon because you get the skill level up. And that makes a big difference to get new moves and stuff. Supply crate, we got some iron arrows, ancient coffer gave us some linen paint, arcane embroidery. So that's all cool. Oh, got a legless hat here. Cool. Yep. So we're gonna go ahead and move on here. Not before getting these iron ore, so I don't really leave them. Now, cool thing in this situation, when I got hit halfway through collecting this iron ore, the iron ore still has like the same amount of health, so I'm gonna harvest this iron vein here. I go back to this one and see it picks up where I left off, so I don't have to start over. And that's really cool because it makes you like physically upset when you're like almost done collecting like a difficult node and something adds and hits you right before you collect it and then you've got to like restart on it. Now I'm not sure if somebody else can come in and pick up where you left off um, but you can. So that's good news. There's some more iron down here. Always good to grab iron. It's worth money even if you are not going to use it. Just go ahead and pick up, bring it in town. Stock it up, sell it, do whatever you want to do. Here's a really big one. And that being said, when the server first launches and you get nodes like this big iron vein, you might want to sell it right away initially because it might be worth more money on the market um, at first because it's hard to find the stuff and people are you know, very competitive with wanting to level up their skills and things or get good items like good armor and stuff. They might be willing to give you all the gold they have so far for some or they might not know where to get it they might not have been able to get it like they're behind the leveling curve they're lower level than you by the time they get there there's so many people that have already mined it that you just can't find it it's a lot harder to find because everybody's mining it so carpe diem on the ores and the veins because it's definitely good to take advantage of the bonus we have it
can't do the springstone yet, but that's a mining thing, I believe, so that's pretty cool. I like how they've invented, like, new things here. There's, like, new elements. I remember the first time I played a game and there was, like, elemental things. It was, like, it was, like, EverQuest 1 Conqueror or something. Um, I mean, obviously I played, like, the classic games, like, Sonic had powers and stuff, but, like, the elemental aspect of, like, fire, ice, and earth, and water, or whatever, I guess, ice is water. Air, earth, fire, water. Um, RuneScape was one of the first ones, but I think earlier than that was the EverQuest Conquest, or whatever it was called. It's like a... I think it was on like PlayStation 1. That was fun. But uh, I'm hoping this game kind of does that. Um, EverQuest did that too. Obviously, World of Warcraft has you know, nature and shadow and fire and ice and all that stuff. But I mean, I don't really see it as like stealing it because it's just kind of like part of life. So that's magic. I'm probably going to max out everything um, when the game comes out. I'm going to be completely maxed out. For the RS players, I'll be 99 everything. I'm going to get my Master Cape, Completionist Cape, in this game. And uh, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm not going to type or talk to anybody because I don't get muted as banned. Um, because nobody's going to sense a human or anymore. So, I, uh, I tend to just not talk to anybody if I don't have to. And it's cool in this game that you could do that. Obviously, I know that as you get a higher level, you're going to have to do that. The first example of that in this game is the Amrite Mine, at least in the area I'm in. But the Amrite Mine is like a group area that's like 20 plus. And you got to do a quest to get a key to get in. or be with somebody that's already done the quest and has the key. And then additionally, you've got to kill like this boss mob and his bodyguards to get into the portal for the dungeon. And I personally did not make it into the Amrite mine, but I'd seen enough um, people talking about it. And then after beta ended, I seen enough video footage of other people playing it to understand basic concepts. You just make a group and it's a dungeon, you know, so more or less it works like World of Warcraft. There's usually quests, you go in there, you kill the boss, and he's usually the quest drop item or whatever. So anyways, we're headed back here to Windsward, and uh, well, that musket's pretty good. Savage this stuff. And this is when I start to reflect on that maybe I don't need to pick up every node that I run past because at this point we're starting to run out of time in the beta. We've only got I think a day left. The syndicate guy here. Complete these two. As you can see, I got over 2,000 tokens now and pick up some new stuff. And we'll check out the rewards. This time around, I was looking at the musket and rapier because I like to do damage. But uh, next time around, I might do the hatchet and the musket, or maybe like the shield or the coat or whatever. 
eventually I'll get all of the add up stuff unless we find something better or make something better but so far that I've seen that's the best stuff you can do without going into a dungeon or being over level 30 And we're getting near the end here of the episode 11. So I'm about to go wrap up my barbecue ribs and give another hour to just steam and marble up a little bit. Make our iron ingot. And then I'm going to come back for episode 12. And we're going to travel to some new towns. Level 20 smelting. Steel ingot. I'm still not entirely sure how the whole steel, iron, gold, silver thing works. I know how it works in real life. I'm not positive how it works in this game yet. And that's why we're doing this. We want to test everything. Find the best way to do it all. We've got our night crawlers. We'll pick up uh, 20 medium salmon. And deposit what we don't need back into the storage shed. This is always a good practice. If you're getting ready to log out, you're going to go to a new episode or anything like that. So if you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, share this on our social media, be a homie. I definitely want to play together when it launches. So hit me up. See you.